hypoplastic left heart syndrome is a congenital heart disease in which the left side of the heart does not form properly and is too small. So being a little more specific, it's where the mitral valve, which is one of the valves on the left side of the heart, the left ventricle, and the aortic valve are too small to support blood going through the left side of the heart, at least enough to support the rest of the body. Now, we also see in fetal life evolving hypoplastic left heart syndrome, which is where we see that the left heart structures are borderline or are getting too small, and we worry that by the time the baby's gonna be born that the baby will have hypoplastic left heart syndrome. HLHS is a really serious condition, and the reason we're interested in intervening in fetal life is that we hope that doing procedures even earlier and giving the heart, the left heart, an even longer time to grow will help ultimately improve their outcomes long term and make the outcomes even better in this population of patients. We offer three different kinds of fetal interventions for babies with hypoplastic left heart syndrome or related conditions. For babies with fetal aortic stenosis, what we do is we're actually putting a balloon, blowing a balloon across the baby's valve so that that valve is no longer stuck closed. And it allows blood to go through the baby's heart, through the left side of the heart, and helps the left heart grow better. Now that procedure is done on mom through the belly, where we put a needle through the belly, through the uterus, and through the baby's heart, but a very small needle to balloon up the valve. After the fetal aortic valvuloplasty, we typically monitor mom in the hospital for about 48 hours. We make sure that she's okay, that she hasn't had any complications from the procedure, and then she's typically discharged home. Then we follow the baby serially by doing ultrasounds of the baby to make sure the heart is still doing okay, and we do that until the delivery. The third fetal intervention we offer is atrial septal intervention, where we try to open up the atrial septum in these babies. Now this is specifically for babies who already have hypoplastic left heart syndrome and there's no hope of really opening up the left ventricle or making the left ventricle grow. Now these babies, as blood comes back to the left side of the heart, they cannot push blood through their left ventricle, so they depend on a hole in the top chambers of the heart to get blood circulating through the baby's heart. However, some babies, that wall doesn't have a hole or the hole is too small and those babies can get very sick either in the womb or after birth, right after birth. And so we know that those babies are the highest risk. And so in those babies, we offer a procedure to open a hole in the top, between the top chambers of the heart. And that, that wall is called the atrial septum. And so we can make an atrial septal defect. And we can do this either by using a balloon or a stent, which is like a cylinder, to keep a hole in the top of the heart and allow blood to flow more naturally through the baby's heart. One of the other interventions we offer, which is pretty new, and I believe we're the only people in the country doing it, is for babies who have sort of a long, skinny left ventricle. So it's not fetal aortic stenosis, but it's where multiple left-sided structures are small, and we're worried about that baby being treated as hypoplastic left heart syndrome when they're born. For this condition, we actually offer chronic maternal oxygen therapy. So this is where we put a face mask or a nasal cannula on mom daily, and our thought is that by giving oxygen to the mom, that increases the amount of oxygen in her blood, that increases the amount of oxygen that's going to the placenta and to the fetus, and that puts more flow in the baby's lungs. That increased flow in the baby's lungs comes to the left side of the heart, and we sort of use the no flow, no grow phenomenon. We think if you improve flow to the left side of the heart, it will improve growth to the left heart. And we're doing a current research study on that right now, and we've uh, done eight moms so far. We typically start chronic oxygen in the third trimester and they receive daily oxygen through the rest of pregnancy. Now, the way we're doing it right now is they receive a minimum of eight hours a day, although we, we are looking into doing it for 24 hours a day through a nasal cannula or a nose piece in the nose. So they re they're on oxygen every day and then when they go into labor, they take the oxygen off, they come to the hospital and they deliver the baby and we watch the baby and see what needs to be done, but our hope is that their left-sided structures are larger at birth and if we hadn't done the oxygen, so the interventions we need to do are less. This is still a research study, but we've had positive results so far. Depending on what their condition is, there's different gestational ages at which we can do the interventions. For fetal aortic valve dilation, we'll usually do it as early as 21 or 22 weeks. For fetal atrial septal intervention, where we open up the atrial septum, we can do that probably as early as 21 weeks and going all the way up to 32 or 33 weeks. And for the maternal oxygen trial to help grow the left side of the heart, we usually start that in the third trimester, so around 26 weeks. 
All babies that have HLHS and related conditions are delivered here at the Pavilion for Women. Our neonatology team goes to the delivery and assesses the babies. Now most of our babies are pretty stable at birth, but if they're not, the neonatology team can take care of that and get them where they need to go. For most babies, we'll get a line placed in their belly button that it, so we can provide a continuous infusion of medication to help stabilize their circulation. And then they're transferred to either the neonatal intensive care unit or the cardiac intensive care unit. Then we do an echocardiogram after birth and we assess what interventions we need to do from that point. There definitely are risks with fetal intervention, although we think as we do more and more as a community in medicine, we're trying to lower those risks. But clearly we're putting a needle in the fetus of mom. So the main risks are to the fetus. Mothers actually do quite well, and there have been no complications at our center or any other centers reported for mothers who undergo fetal intervention. But for babies, it, sometimes we see that the baby might have a rhythm disorder or they might get a fluid collection around the heart. And we can treat that by taking that fluid away, but it's not uncommon to need to do that. As with any procedure, there are risks of larger complications, including death of the fetus. We're really lucky here at Texas Children's Hospital, the Fetal Center and the Heart Center to work together in the same facility. It's, it's really amazing. So we have the obstetrician, gynecologist, we have the maternal fetal medicine doctors, the fetal cardiologist, the congenital heart surgeons, the anesthesiologist, the OR team, and we all work together in the same facility and it really is amazing. We discuss all these cases in a conference with about 200 people, including an ethicist, and talk about what makes the most sense for these patients. So it really is a wonderful continuity of care to be able to see mom, see the fetus, care for the fetus, provide an intervention if necessary, and then have the baby have care at Texas Children's Hospital, which is connected to us, and then have outstanding surgical results. So it really is nice to have this all together so we're not sort of calling across the street or calling across town to the adult women's hospital. We really do work together and it really is a, a wonderful place to be. One thing that parents should look for when they're looking for a site of care is the quality of the congenital heart program. So although we're doing fetal cardiac interventions, almost all these babies are gonna need something done after birth. And the quality of your congenital heart surgery program really affects the outcomes for these babies. Babies can have spectacular outcomes, they can do really well, but it's really variable by center and you wanna to go to a center that has a lot of experience, that does a lot of surgeries, and is very comfortable dealing with problems like this, like single ventricle heart disease. So we're really lucky to be here at, a, at Texas Children's Hospital where we have outstanding surgical outcomes. We do a huge number of surgeries every year and people are really dedicated to care after birth in children with HLHS and other congenital heart disease.